Today, we are taking you to the historic city of Kotor, Montenegro. And we are camped, we think, about a 10 to 15 minute walk from the old town here. So we're gonna get you there and show you all about it. But look at our campsite, surrounded by these tall, giant mountains. A big wall. Yeah, and I don't know if you guys can see it. We're gonna get you a little closer to it. There is a fortress wall that goes up these steep mountains. And it runs anywhere from 10 to 20 meters tall. It is a giant wall. But uh, let's take our 10 minute walk to the old town, Kurt, and then we'll tell them more about this city. So our campsite is basically a public parking lot, but we can't fit in the ones that are actually closer to the town. And they welcome RVs and campers here. We got two other campers sharing this lot with us right now. We think it's about $15 a day, which as far as Europe goes, is not bad for parking this close to a city. So the only downfall is we got quite a little walk to get to town. But I think we walk along this beautiful uh, Bay of Kotor, maybe past a marina with some boats. Now this city is a cruise ship destination as well. So a lot of ships will come in here. Some stay for just a few hours and some do an overnight stay here. But we're excited. It's supposed to be a really cool city. So a few things about this city. Well first let's back up and start with a few things about Montenegro. It has been ruled by many different types of empires over the centuries, including the Venetians. It was its own empire for a while. Uh, then it was part of Yugoslavia, I believe. And then after it, Yugoslavia got divvied up, I believe in the 90s, maybe late 80s, I can't remember exactly. But this country was part of Serbia. It was actually called Serbia and Montenegro. It wasn't until 2006, very, very recently, that Montenegro declared its independence and became its very own country. So this is, in the terms of world history, a teeny tiny little baby, brand new infant country. But the history here is epic. Which uh, brings me to one of the next things. This city is a fortress city, it is walled. And during Black Plague times, lots of kitty cats lived here and lived within these walls. And now, today, cats here are loved and treasured because it is believed that the plague did not hit this area so hard because the cats lived within the wall city when it came through. And uh, the plague was helped to spread quite rapidly through rats. So cats are loved and treasured here in this city still till today times. And it goes back all the way to the Black Plague. So we've been told we will see kitty cats everywhere. Now we've made it to one of the famous and rightfully so landmarks here in Kotar. And I don't know if you say it Kotor or Kotar. I've heard it different ways. It is spelled K-O-T-O-R. But this church behind me has some pretty epic history, doesn't it, Kurt? Yeah, it really does. Now, it goes way back to early Christian times, uh, like 100 or 200 AD. And it is referenced, this area, not this particular church, but this exact area, this part of Kotar, right here where this church is now built, is referenced in the Bible through, what was it, Romans, Romans and Timothy. Timothy. So in two different areas, this particular area is actually referenced way back at the beginning of Christian times. And I believe this church was built in the 1100s. It started as a Catholic church, now it's an Orthodox church, and it is beautiful.
So inside the church was just absolutely stunning. I loved the artwork, the detail, and you could start to see sides of the mosaics. And also there's a museum upstairs and they had silver chalices or gold chalices and all sorts of silver works and gold works. They even had some tapestries and some other art, just various pieces that you could tell, uh, well, they're dated, but all the way back to the four and five hundreds, a lot of 1600 stuff, but just absolutely fascinating museum and the history here is incredible. We are having a fun time strolling around this walled city. And you might think after a while, all these walled cities kind of look alike. And I'll tell you, they're each fascinating and different in their own way. And the history in this one really shines. And also there's so many cats running around this place. It's crazy. And you guys know us, know we love cats, but there's also a cat museum here. Now I don't know if it's open in the off season, but we'll scoot by there and check it out. There are several just small little churches in here as well. But what a fascinating little town. This might be it with the cannons, this is it. Museum.
the 300s, 600s, 13 or 1400s. Look at this little boat right here. Look at that. Look at that. This guy. Silver seashells, yeah. They had fancy dress back there too. Did you see that? I mean, you could you get more than the maritime history. You kind of get clothes. Yeah. Linens, jewelry, weapons, boats, wars. It's a pretty cool museum. These guns are so ornate, but it just really gives you a sense of the sea time, the maritime trade, and the pirates, and the militaries, and all the stuff that was going on in the sea. It was clearly very active. And this place right here was like a hub for seamen, for navigation. And even back then they had like education. Yeah, this place, this place was the hub for the, for the seamen. Yeah, it's probably, well, of course it's due to its location on this bay, which was strategically used in many different battles and being taken over by different empires and stuff like that. But people from like Russia and everything would be sent here to be educated on how Seaman. This is some pretty cool history, way too much to try to tell you guys in one video, but it's fascinating and if you're ever in Kotar, you need to come here. Yeah, for sure. They do a really good job with giving you the information on these little voice things. It's a great museum. So the Maritime Museum was super fascinating because it kind of took us all the way back to the beginning of the shipping industry and clearly the ship industry the maritime industry and clearly this area was a hub and so we could actually see as we got up to the third floor of the museum it kept getting to more modern stuff and more about the school and the educational system but i mean this thing took us all the way back to like pirate times and we could see their clothes their dress their weapons uh, we could see their furniture of the time. So it was more than just maritime. It was really a walk through history and you could see the importance of what the industry had on this town and this area and really the world at the time. But we also learned that this was a little place that was under attack back in the pirates days several times. And when you're in this fort and you're in this city and you see all the walls and all the closeness, this was a really difficult place to siege. They couldn't, nobody could really take it. And when you're in here, you can see why with the walls pushing all the way up to the top of the mountain, all the way into the tight, narrow streets of this fortress. It is just fascinating. We have stopped off for some lunch at a place called the Bastion and I have decided that I'm going to get a pork steak stuffed with cheese and I think we're going to split a Greek salad. Are you still undecided? I'm either going to get the uh, seafood with risotto, seafood risotto or seafood spaghetti. So it'll probably be like a mix of calamari, fish, shrimp, squid. You're loving all muscles. the seafood through here, yeah, aren't I you? Got, are you kidding me? I got to get seafood. <laughs> it is nice to be back in the land of fresh squid juice. Limonada. <laughs> Except for this one is made with lemons and not limes. But it is tasty and we are happy. <laughs> When life gives you lemons, turn it to lemonade. That's definitely what we're doing right here today in this sunshine. And they were not kidding when they said this town is full of kitty cats. There's about 15 of them along this wall behind me, sunning on these chairs. They're everywhere and they're so cute. So our meal starts with some yummy fresh soft fluffy bread with a little olive oil dressing and we ordered a little greek salad to share and look at that thing 
onions, tomatoes, cucumbers, olives, feta. Spoon that thing up, Curdy. Mm, looks tasty, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. My kind of salad, no lettuce. <laughs> yeah. I think there's some like. Um, Cucumbers in there. Yeah, definitely. Favorite either. That'll be good. Quite possibly the best piece of feta cheese I have ever put in my mouth. This is a really good, fresh, yummy Greek salad. Maybe only to be topped when we get to Greece one day. <laughs> <laughs> All right, seafood pasta. It looks like I got some mussels, some shrimp, some calamari. I have a giant piece of pork that is stuffed. Stuffed. There's some cheese in there somewhere. So my pork is very, very thin and folded over, and it has a thin layer of ham inside. But what is making this so tasty is the cheese, the layer of cheese that's inside. It is smoky and sharp and has tons of flavor, and it is bringing this whole thing together for sure. I think they're waiting for leftovers. How can you say no to those little eyes? I had saved about a third of my pork, cut it up in little tiny pieces. We tossed it all around. I think every kitty got at least one bite. Kurt, you shouldn't have done that. You got in trouble. So, <laughs> my seafood pasta was delicious. Ate it all, every last bite, bread, cleaned up snow's fries. I need some energy because I'm going on a hike up that thing. Kurt's going up the wall. I'm going to skip the big hike, but I think I'm going to figure out how to get on this wall right behind us. So I'll walk on the baby wall, and Kurt will walk on the big wall, and we'll meet back at the van. Guys, it's official. Me and Snow have split up, but it's only because... I'm going up these tall stairs up here to this fortress. And she's been walking around a lot today. And so she's gonna take her easy exploring the fort down below while we take a walk up these stairs. But just think about how old these stones are and how many people throughout the hundreds of years who've climbed up through here. Man. Let's go. And just a couple switchbacks up, we can already see the Bay of Kotar down below us. And of course, the historic Old Town. It's a steep climb, guys. So let's get going. So right away, you come up to some ruins from like 16th, 17th century battle encampments. And then we turn the corner and we've got these walls here and you can see maybe the church steeple up at the top. So I think that church, church is the next sort of checkpoint, but I think the views are going to keep getting better, guys. So you can see here is a map of the Bay of Quator. So we came in from Croatia this way and you're over around and Rizanto, Rizano is where we stayed from in the last video and we also drove down to Presto and that's where we saw the churches out of the islands and here we're in Katero or <coughs> Kotar. So this is literally a cat feeding station. Looks like it runs off solar and water and kibbles come out. That's amazing. So we entered on the south gate. Our camp is over here. The marina is here. We've toured y'all all through here. We came up through here. We had lunch right here. And this is the south gate right through that tunnel right over there. Now I'm going to try to get up on this wall. And then we'll come through here and we'll come out through the main gate so we can get another look at the marina and the front of these fortresses. Now after lunch, Kurt has come here 
and he's going to take this trail whoo, up to however far he can get up there. And this entire area, this yellow area, is enclosed in a fortress wall. Unbelievable. And just like that, we're up on top of the fortress wall. <laughs> now, normal life goes on over there. School, buildings, houses. And the fortress, not only is it surrounded by these walls, but it's got this moat. Now, this fortress, this walled city, took a while to build. They started building it sometime in the 1100s, finished it up in the 1300s. It's held off many, many war attempts, many invasions. It's been conquered as well. And uh, the history of this place, it just continues to fascinate me. And it's beautiful. <laughs> I see Kurt right up there. He's got on a bright red shirt so I can see him. I don't think he sees me. Ha, <laughs> perfect. And at every turn, there's some sort of encampment with, I don't know, sort of those places where you can look out and shoot out of and still hide under protection. And really quickly, we made it up to this church. It wasn't nearly as high as I thought it was gonna be. Uh, I think it's closed off, so I'm pretty sure we can't go in, but get up here and see if we can peek in the windows. All we have is a little peephole to see into there, but more impressive definitely is the view up here from this church overlooking the bay and over there would be sort of the narrows where people have to navigate in to that narrow section to get back into here into these this bay so from here we're about a hundred meters above that little small church maybe about a third of the way that church and you can kind of see the winding wall that comes up through here but we're at another encampment and this definitely looks like more intense structure there's definitely some cannon mounts up here and then you can look up we're a short distance from the fort up there so let's go ahead and get up there and take in the view so we've already told y'all because of the history of the church in this area and that there's reference to this area in the bible this city goes way 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 back but there's evidence of some of the forts some of the structures around the forts where Kurt's climbing up goes back to prehistoric times. So we know that the stuff on the top of the hill is extremely old, that some of the town squares started being here in the hundreds. Uh, the Romans were here in the 500s and uh, just been going from there. The church that we saw earlier was built in the 1100s. So to say that this place sits in a favorable location to last a long time, sitting on this bay and surrounded by these mountains, it's been able to protect itself from invasions and last truly the test of time. I can still see him, that bright red shirt <laughs> with his black sleeves. He's about to pop out behind that tree. There he is. So Kurt is almost to the top up there. I just didn't have it in me to even try that today. It looks so steep. So I'm headed back. Got the beautiful marina walk on the way home. Took y'all on the walled city area. So we'll let Kurt show you that fort. We'll see you back at the van. <laughs> Hi, pumpkin. How are you? Can I get in?
All right, you can see around this fort, it gets really steep. And some of the rocks are giving away. And I will tell you, this trail has been in really good shape. But as we get up here close to the top, there are definitely places where there's not walls and there's straight drops. There's loose rocks and there's hollow spots. So let's be careful guys the rest of the way. All right, so I gotta try to find another way around. You can see here, I'm in, I'm up against the dead end and I just tried off that way and that's a dead end too. So I don't know how we're gonna get up to the top. I'll have to go back down a little bit, see if we can find another path. Maybe we missed it. So it looks like, in theory, you can sneak through here, but I don't know how you make it up that. And that's where the wall continues on to the rest, I believe. Oh, here's a little trail. Well, it all ends in the same place. And here we go. I got caught up in the, in the fort there, climbing up through that and missed the rest of the way up. Here we go. All right, I made it to the top, but it figures this last bit would be the sketchiest bit. And you can see there's just some little metal tin plate bridge here and all the people locking up their hopes and dreams that they make it across. And I don't know if you can see it, but down there in the parking lot is the van. This is really kind of the first look we can get at it. And I can see the slider door is open, so that means Snow's already made it back to the kitties. But let's finish this tour out. Let's get up in this fort. This is one of the rare cases where we can actually see a ceiling or a floor still in place. See the old rebar, it's kind of sagging, but we can still come up through here. And these sort of rounded off deals these were additions from the Venetians. See how it's kind of curved and rounded up top? That was kind of a new defensive technology that was brought here by them. Uh, look at this thing. It's pretty big, actually. Coming to Kotar and seeing this old walled city seeing importantly the maritime museum and this walled fort that goes up the hill kind of was a huge change of perspective now up in stone in croatia we saw a walled fortress to protect the salt mines but this actually is to protect this region and you can see how it was designed it's sort of back here at the end of the bay in a cove and so if you're gonna attack by sea, you have to come down the length of the cove and face head on this fortress that's down at sea level. And the fortress is walled and you saw all the little tight walls of the old city. So to infiltrate that would take a mass force. And then there's a canal up the way and it looks like they used to set up the attack sort of on the adjacent cliff side and across that river and try to attack here. But this walled fort up the mountain was meant to protect the flank and you can see it plain as day. So even if the city gets overtaken, they can sort of retreat up here. And as they retreat, they can fall back and defend different positions and always maintain the high ground until they get up to the fort. And again, I cannot imagine it, but they have said controlling the high ground was important back in the medieval times for controlling the city. And based on that premise alone, you can see how this was such a strong fortress here. And it's absolutely fascinating how even you can see the changes that were made when the Venetians came and were finally able to conquer this region and to take it over. But it's also easy to understand 
how this was a really, really tough place to attack. And you got to remember, this thing goes back to the pirate days. So you got to envision that bay full of merchant ships, pirate ships, warships, fishing boats. Man, what an intense time and what a, what a crazy experience, guys. All right, believe me, it was a lot easier going down than it was not up. But overall, really nice hike, kind of a light hike. And uh, I think Snow could have made it easily with a few breaks. But in any event, we're headed back to the van, see what's going on. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you guys know when we put out new videos. And don't forget, you can always follow us over on Instagram to see what's going on in between videos. Cheers, guys!